Welcome back everybody and what I'm going to be talking about today is a second in my series about the British Army soldiers personal equipment. So in the first part of the series I covered what is actually in the soldiers pockets, what clothes he wears, stuff like that. This is the second part where I'm going to be talking about the fighting order. So that consists of PPE such as the helmet, body armour, fighting order and day sack. So what some people will see as they go through this video is they might think, right, that's not in line with the army's fight light policy at the moment, okay? Now I've spent most of my time in recce units in the army such as the Pathfinders and this is the sort of way we carried our kit, this is how we packed it, okay? And fight light is more to do with what you should be carrying for your specific role as opposed to, you know, exact items, okay? So in a reconnaissance unit, you do need to be carrying a fair bit of stuff within your sort of fighting order because if, if something was to go wrong, if you come under contact and you, you potentially have to ditch your Bergens, go on the run, you want to have stuff on you so that's going to enable you to operate and survive, okay? Um, a normal infantry soldier in a, in a company or a battalion has got a lot more people around him and he's potentially, he or she is going to have access to vehicles, you're going to be getting in and out of armoured vehicles to, you know, assault objectives, stuff like that. So it's a slightly different mindset. But I'll go through what kit I carry within my personal fighting order. And a quick 360 my kit here before I go through it then, as it's been worn. So, Virtus helmet there, Virtus body armour. Probably the only decent bits of kit that's within the Virtus system. A lot of guys within 16 Assault Brigade have just been the rest of it. And as you'll see with my kit, a lot of it's personal sort of purchased kit. So normal army, you know, webbing, as in old style webbing there, a day sack worn on top of the body armour and um, with the assault order wear worn underneath the body armour. So this is my fighting order then. And this is the like an old school setup where you've got pouches on the belt and a yoke. Um, a lot of armies, a lot of soldiers as well, have gone away from this kind of setup and it's more on the body armour and on a lightweight sort of shooter's belt type thing. But for dismounted um, infantry, um, this quite often is, is a better option. It's more comfortable. You can carry a lot more kit on your belt. Um, and I've always kind of gone with this kind of setup. So going from this side across then, what I've got first is a grenade pouch for a HE grenade. Then ammunition pouches. And on the actual side of the ammunition pouch here, I've got a small pouch with a, a multi-tool in it. And then in each of these, I've got three Magpul magazines for a total of six. Underneath the ammo pouch then, I've got a dump pouch here. No idea what make that is, I've had that for years. Um, that's just folded up, ready to be used. So if you're in a contact, you just open up the Velcro, drop it down, and you can drop the magazines in there when you're doing your magazine changes. On the side of the ammo pouch here then, what I've got is a small knife. This is a a SOG seal pup. Um, I've used this quite a bit overseas and it actually came in really handy when we was in Muzakala for butchering goats because we ran out of rations. We was there for so long and we couldn't get resupplied. So that's had some good use over the years. Next pouch along then, water. So I've got a litre of water there. And I've got a metal mug to go with that water bottle. So I can actually boil water um, and I'll go into that next into this pouch here and I'm going to do that. So in this pouch here, this is my kind of, this is similar to that lofty Wiseman SAS pouch in a way. It's kind of like my escape pouch, but a bit more of a modern version. So what I've got first then is a strobe light. So you just take the top off and for white light, you just pop the button up and that's for signaling, you know, for aircraft and stuff like that. And obviously it can be used in IR mode with the with the lid down. So that's a signaling item there. Um, and in conjunction with that, I've also got my marker panel that I've used for many years. So that's folded flat, it's kind of half a marker panel there, again for signaling for aircraft. And I have used that for calling in Kazakhs in Afghanistan. Um, then I've got a whole block of the, the new issue Fire Dragon fuel there so that's just the army shoe stuff you know um, so for cooking on and in conjunction with that then 
I've got three large nails. So you can actually just knock them into the ground and balance, you know, once they're in a tripod kind of setup, you can balance your cup on it and cook on. So just to space, save a little bit of space, I've just thrown them in rather than an actual cooker as such. Again, with the uh, the signaling, I've got a couple of um, silooms, a couple of glow sticks. I've got a red one and a blue one um, for various reasons. And then I've got approximately 24 hours rations in here too. So I've got two all in the bags from the Armishu ration packs. I've got a packet of tuna. I've got some peanuts there. And that's all from the, uh, the Armishu ration packs. I've also got a fairly decent brew kit as well. So that's what's in there. There's, there's also some matches and a little bit, a uh, small packet of toilet paper in there. So with all that together there, there's definitely 100% um, 24 hours rations there. Oh, and the old Yorkie bar. <laughs> so spare racing spoon. Okay, I carry one in my smock, but I always carry a spare in my weapon as well. Because without a spoon, you, you know, pretty much, you know, it's quite difficult to eat anything, to be honest. You want to be eating ration packs with your hands. Um, going along from there then, what I've got is my IFAC. Now, I see a lot of guys' kits nowadays with these tiny little IFACs, basically an ammo pouch with like one field dressing in and one um, tourniquet. That ain't good enough. You definitely need more than that. You need at least two of each, if not more. This is a um, UK Tactical, or sorry, a, a Warrior Systems pouch. And it basically, it's got this Velcro thing here. And then if you want to basically throw it to someone, you just basically pull on that and it takes the whole pouch off. And you can throw it to somebody. Obviously, this is meant to be for you though. It's not meant to be for someone else, but you know, you do what you need to do. So that opens up like so. And what you've got in here is two Israeli bandages, two tourniquets, a J tube for securing an airway, and then at the back here, I've got some of the Celox gauze as well to help stop bleeding and large wounds. And that's all together in that pouch there. Okay, then next along, then I've got another water bottle pouch. So I've got another litre of water there. And then on the outside of that pouch, what I've got is a loop line, okay, and carabiner. So with that then you can make like sort of rope bridge type things to get across fast flowing rivers. You can use these to haul bergens up and down uh, cliff faces. You can even make an, an abseiling harness out of this. And we did use these whilst I was in the pathfinders on the mountains and actually abseiled using these as harnesses. Um, next pouch along then, this is kind of like a, an admin pouch, stroke weapons pouch. And in here I've got a speed loader for your magazines. I've got my rifle cleaning kit, um, and this is from um, Contact Left. Uh, it's a UK-based company. It's a nice little weapon cleaning pouch there, um, and I've got all my various things like my pull-through, my weapon cleaning kit, all in there. You know, your your wire brushes and all that sort of good stuff is in there, all held together, nice and neat. I've then got some CLP. You know, your, your oil for your weapon, basically. Not to get mixed up with this, you wouldn't want to get mixed up, but um, some mozzie repellent, okay? Definitely a must if you're in any kind of tropical environment or even in the summer in some parts of the UK, uh, specifically Scotland and that. Um, and I have that in this pouch, so it's easy to get to. If you're on patrol and you just need to spray yourself a bit. Um, head torch, really handy bit of kit for lots of reasons. You know, hands-free light when you're maybe giving an orders. Um, in a light proof basher or something you definitely need to have hands free light or treat the casualty whatever you know and it's got a red filter on the top of that as well if needed last thing in this main part of this pouch then is a rifle sling and then it's got a separate little pocket on the outside of this pouch here in here then what I keep is a small container for some yellow ear defenders a backup torch, okay, so I've, all, I've got one in my um, pocket, my smock, plus I've got the head torch there, but this is just a little backup torch there in case one of those gets broken. Um, and then what I've got here then, so this is a bit of an unusual one. Um, this is uh, nail varnish removing pads, okay. Um, need a bit of a replen in there, actually there's only a couple left. Now, 
this isn't for taking nail polish off my nails. This is for if you've written on your orders book that's you know got waterproof pages or something, or if you're an FAC, I was an FAC, you use those um, the marker pens, the Luma colours, and this basically wipes them clean so you can then use that page again instead of it just staying on there with a, a permanent marker pen. So that's what that's what that's for. Last pouch going round to the side here then. That's just a smoke grenade pouch, so for your phosphorus grenade. So all these pouches here then on the webbing then were mainly made by Boris um, from Cooper's Kit Corner, um, with the exception of obviously the Warrior Systems one and um, the Yoke. So the Yoke is a JJ's one, so I really like the JJ's um, Yoke. It's really nice and comfortable, a uh, good bit of kit. And that is the fighting order there. So next part of my fighting order is a day sack, okay? A lot of people forget that, you know, you do need a day sack as part of your fighting order because a lot of the kit you're going to be carrying into an assault or even on patrol is not going to fit in your webbing. So things like support weapons, support weapons ammo, things like belted, you know, ammunition, uh, mortar rounds, radios, radio batteries, they're the bigger items that you're going to have to put into some sort of day sack or assault pack, okay? So this one that I'm using here, this is the JJ's uh, Light Fighter Assault Pack and i think it's a great bit of kit it's not too big it's not too small it's got a top lid as well so you can fit things like 66s underneath it or whatever um, and it's got the mods already on it so it's got the mesh sides on it it's got mollo on the back and all that so things that people sometimes get modified on their day sacks is already on this bit of kit um, so going into what i'm carrying in the day sack itself then um, first thing on the outside in one of the mesh pockets then is one of those little brew mugs, the thermal brew mugs. Um, little bit of a luxury item, but um, you know, if you can afford the little bit of extra weight there, I think they're great because, as we all know, hurry up and wait in any army. You know, you're, you're getting a brew on, you're getting, you know, you're chilling out, and then all of a sudden, right, ready to move. Two minutes, we're off, um, and you can get your brew on in this. Have a quick sip, throw it in a side pouch, and then when you've flipping smashed the enemy, when you're taking their position. You're sat there and you can have a victory brew afterwards, can't you? And it's still hot. Okay, going into the day sack then, what I've got in the top flap. So I've got a water filter in the top there, okay? Um, I have spoken about this in one of my other videos. So this is a, a Soya Mini with a, an improved bag. So it's a CNOC bag, which has got a better opening on the top. It's easier to collect water. So if you were away from your your main rucksack your main kit for a while and you need to repen your water then i've got the means to actually purify it there or filter it okay next thing i've got in here then is a fidlock waterproof bag uh, you can get these from contact left in the uk um, and these are a great little waterproof bag for just putting your odds and sods in and make different sizes and stuff and what i've got in there is the old military army issue batteries double a's I've got triple A's as well and a spare ba uh, spare um, lighter. So all the stuff that's like essential to keep 100% waterproof. And that's in my fighting order as well. So if I need to change batteries in various items on my kit, then they're ready to go. Next thing I've got here is another couple of chem lights and I've got the Silooms, handy for lots of stuff. Then I've got a hank of green paracord again really handy for you know countless amounts of tasks um you know <laughs> the most minor ones getting your basher up isn't it you know um if you run out of flipping cord or your bungees are snapped or whatever you've got cord there and you can just use that for bodging and making all sorts of stuff last thing in the top flat then is some emergency tabasco um you get caught out without that for me anyway you're in a world of hurt so going into the actual main part of the day sack got a waterproof liner absolutely essential to keep all your kit waterproofed especially in the UK but um, you know as an SOP you always have your kit in waterproof bag and guess what another waterproof bag inside here this is more to organize my kit but again you know I could take this out and then plonk it in the very top above this um, if I needed to for easier access but inside this smaller bag then what I've got is a woolly hat okay so really important bit of kit for when it's been freezing cold at night a lot of your heat is lost through your head 
and a shemag. Again, a bit of warmer's kit as the Marines would like to say. And that's all that's in that bag. If I had another pair of gloves, say if it was a particularly cold environment, um, I'd have another pair of gloves in here too. Next thing up here then is my warm jacket. So this is an Arcteryx jacket. Um, nice bit of kit. And yeah, basically you're flipping. You want to make sure you've got something warm if you've got the space in your day sack. To, um, if you get caught out and you, you know, you're know you out for a few hours or even overnight, you want to have something in there that's going to keep you warm. Um, also, talking about environments and stuff, um, you definitely want to be carrying a Gore-Tex jacket or a waterproof jacket of some sort anyway. Um, I wouldn't go anywhere, anywhere at all without a waterproof jacket, especially in the UK. Um, absolute, basically it's essential, pretty much a survival piece of kit if you're in an environment where it's going to rain. The last bit of kit I've got in here then is another 24 hours of rations, okay? So I've got two boil in the bags, I've got a brew kit, I've got a packet of biscuits and some, some peanut butter. And that might not sound like a lot, but that is enough to keep you going at least for 24 hours, okay? So between this and my belt kit, I've got 48 hours worth of rations. Now, this day sack wasn't full, okay, with the kit that's there. The reason being is those things that I mentioned at the very start of when I was talking about the day sack need to go in here as well. So in the British Army, you've got your Bowman radio. Now that's quite a big lump. Then you'd have to have a spare battery for that big lump. Then you'd have to have your MVGs. Then you'd have to have your night sight for your weapon. Then potentially mortar rounds if you're in a rifle company. Then potentially, you know, ammunition for a GPMG or an LMG. Stuff like that, okay? So this would be more packed out and a lot heavier in reality on operations than just these few things you see here. So that's part two covered. That's the British Army soldiers fighting order, okay? Now there will be variations depending on units, roles, stuff like that, but that's my take on it. Generally what I covered, what I carried in most of my service during the army, okay? So I'm sure loads of people will have opinions on this um, and have their own takes, their own ideas, and things that they carried slightly differently to that. Um, put them in the comment section below. I'd be interested to see what you've got to say. And cheers for your, all your support for the channel. It's growing now. And we'll see you again soon. Stay prepared.